How's it going everyone, Blue Knight here, and welcome back to another Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time video. And, well, you pretty much guessed it, more details concerning the game have sprung up since my last video, where I went over almost all the information that we knew at the time, so we'll just consider this video as a follow-up to that one. So first things first, pre-order bonuses. We were already aware that if you buy the game digitally on both PS4 and Xbox One, you'll get the totally tubular skins for Crash and Coco. But GameStop, or EB Games for those in Canada, will receive a one minute hourglass timer. And that's pretty cool. I mean, the game focuses on time to begin with, so yeah, it makes sense. Also, if you take a closer look at this hourglass, you can see the four quantum masks on the sides of it. And that's honestly a really nice detail that was added. Another thing that we learned is that the game will be running on the Unreal Engine 4. Now, when I first saw the trailer, I had a feeling that it was running on the Unreal Engine, but I just never said anything. Due to the fact that the game's look and texturing just scream Spyro Reignited. And also because Toys for Bob is developing the game, who just so happened to have worked on Reignited, which utilized the Unreal Engine, so it makes sense. Now, I can probably already hear the Switch crowd wondering why it's not coming to the Switch day one, seeing as the Switch supports the engine already, with the likes of SpongeBob Rehydrated and Spyro Reignited. Like I said in my previous video, Activision is likely following what they did with Reignited, which was to release the game on the PS4 and Xbox One first, and then release it on the Switch and PC the following year. So don't worry, it'll be here before you know it. Now, a few days ago, there were emails being sent out by GameStop, obviously telling people about the game. And there were a few interesting details included in that email, saying, All new game, full sequel with 100 plus levels of play, new game modes and new abilities for innovative gameplay. Okay, so let's look at the part concerning over 100 levels. First off, that's a lot of levels for a single Crash game. I mean, if we count the number of non-boss levels, extra paths, and all that, that'd be around 88 levels in total. If we were to add those boss levels back into the equation, that would take the number up to 104 levels in total for the Insane Trilogy, making Crash 4 roughly the length of the entirety of the Insane Trilogy, and that's insanely impressive. And that alone explains the $60 price tag, not just because it's an entirely brand new full-fledged Crash game, it's also because of the amount of content it's bringing with it. As for the part involving new game modes, I'm going to take it that they're simply implying the modern and retro play modes, where it simply adjusts the life system, progression, gem earnings, etc, etc. But maybe they're also implying a new multiplayer mode as well. After all, the PlayStation Store does mention that the game does support offline multiplayer for up to four players. Not to mention, the team seems to hint at more playable fan-favorite characters outside of Crash, Coco, and Cortex. At least according to the fact page over on Activision's website. By how it's worded, it sounds like that those characters will only be playable in the story mode. But honestly, there's nothing that would prevent these characters from being playable in a Crash Bash themed minigame to please fans of that game. I guess we'll just have to wait for more confirmation on that at a later time. Next up is a leaked piece of art that appeared over on the updated Crash Bandicoot website before being quickly taken down. I did show it in my previous video, but I never discussed it because it popped up as I was recording that video. So as we start breaking down this piece of art, we can see Dingo Dial in the bottom left corner, in what appears to be a swampy looking area, and he's either sucking up or blasting out water with what I guess was originally his flamethrower. In the top center, we can see the quantum masks, but one of them looks very different and certainly does not appear in the game's cover art. And last I checked, the game introduces four new masks, not five. So this could very well be an early piece of art showing an early design for Lanny Loli, aka the mask that we've seen at the end of the trailer. And for anyone wondering about the mask's name, it was featured in the description provided by the Taiwan Ratings Board, who were the ones that initially leaked the game before it was officially announced. Moving on, we get to totally not Entropy. Okay, who is this? 
Okay, I'm sure a lot of you were probably confused after seeing this character and wondering just what the heck happened to Entropy. Well, the answer is very simple, because that's not Entropy. Instead, I believe that this is an alternate dimension version of Entropy. A female version, if you will. Just like how this female Lombax from Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart could be an alternate female version of Ratchet. Of course, that's just a theory on my part, and of course, it's still yet to be confirmed. But seeing as Crash 4 not only handles time travel, but also handles dimensional travel, or in other words, a multiverse, I wouldn't be surprised if this was the case. Same could also be said for Tana, where I would assume that this is an alternate dimension version of her as a pirate from, well, the pirate world. Now, wouldn't it be funny if Tana was the captain and the Nitro Squad happened to be her crew? I would be all for that. Now, if we move over to the Microsoft Store, we can see that the game will apparently be available three hours before the game actually launches. Interesting, but under the pre-order button, we see that the game offers in-app purchases. <laughs> Now, before anyone starts panicking about the game being microtransaction heavy, first of all, don't do that. Just don't. Simply because we don't know the exact extent that the microtransactions will go in this game. I mean, with Crash Team Racing, there was a panic in the community about microtransactions for extra fast Wampa Coins and all that, but they also allowed you to earn Wampa Coins just for playing the game, so long as your console is connected to the internet. Going back to Crash 4 though, since we're getting tubular skins for purchases of the digital version of the game, not pre-orders, I honestly don't remember which one I said in my previous video, but it's purchases, not pre-order. But skins. We might as well go ahead and assume that there will be more skins to choose from in the final game. Assumingly, how you would purchase these would be with the Wumpa Fruits serving as the game's currency, which has been confirmed in IGN's interview with Toys for Bob. Well, at least the part about the currency, not the part about the skins being purchased with Wumpa Fruit. Just keep that in mind until we find out more. On another note, the PlayStation Store does not mention anything about in-game purchases yet. So there's really no need to worry about microtransactions just yet, but at the end of the day, this is still Activision we're talking about. So there's still that reason to worry. Last but not least, we got some new gameplay of the game's pirate level courtesy of IGN, and it looks amazing. I'm not going to overanalyze this like I normally do, instead I'm just going to point out a few things here and there. At the start we can see a clock for the time trials, which do make a return in Crash 4, you know, for the relics. Same goes for the crate tally system at the end of each level. There's even a new crate with fire coming out of it, by the looks of it we might only have a limited amount of time to smash it before it goes boom. When it's broken, we just get more wampa fruit, so it's basically another hazard crate with extra benefits to it. Oh, and hopping nitro crates are confirmed. Oh goody. Also, the Nitro Eruptor crate makes a return from previous games, which lends to the level's crate total, which is 159 crates for this particular level. Now, before I go, I just want to mention just how vast this level looks. I mean, we go from the shore to the inner parts of the island to a pirate cove and what appears to be the treasure vault of the ship. All that in just one level? That's not only some deep level progression, but I'm going to take it that these levels may be longer as well. And yeah, that's actually everything I've got for this video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching and the support. Also, be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below about all this info that I just shared. And also be sure to stay tuned to the channel for even more Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time news, updates, and discussions as they happen. Once again, I've been Blue Knight, and I'll see you guys back here next time. Goodbye.